Um, and also be kind to yourself. If you're in a place where you can't push, you can't push through that, know that it will come. Like if it feels like it's a now thing and if you say to yourself now or never, that's pressure. Whereas if you say to yourself, okay, I can't do it now, but I know what I want and I will get there, then it feels it feels kinder to yourself. Being kind to ourselves is very important, right? Especially on this journey um, where probably a lot of our younger years were spent being not so kind to ourselves and hating on ourselves, especially for being different, for being, you know, queer, for being a lesbian, a gay woman, et cetera, right? And so being able to learn to be kind is difficult, but it's probably one of the most important things that you can ever do for yourself, right? Welcome to the Queer Quest podcast, your beacon of light and sprinkle of glitter in the queer community. I'm your host, Christiana Green, CEO and founder of Queer Quest and a transformation coach for queer individuals. And together, we're embarking on a journey of transformation. Each week, we bring you a new training topic or connect you with visionary queer leaders in healing and coaching, diving deep into conversations that inspire growth, celebrate diversity, and empower you to live authentically. So wherever you are, settle in and let's get ready to unlock the vibrant potential within. This is where your quest begins. Hello, 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 all you fabulous souls out there, and welcome to the Queer Quest podcast. I'm your host, Christiana Green, the CEO and founder of Queer Quest. And today I'm super excited to be having on Katie Smith, who is a gay women's transformation and empowerment coach. Thanks for jumping on here today. How are you doing? I'm good. I thank you for having me. It's lovely to meet you and be here with you, Cristiano. Yeah, I'm good. Very cold in England, but it's okay. Yes, we're in very different uh, climates. Uh, Katie is in England and it's it's probably like zero degrees and I'm in Bali. Yeah. It's like 35 degrees here. We're talking Celsius here for those of you who are who are looking at it that way. But um, yeah, very different climates. But I appreciate you jumping on uh, here today. And I'm super excited to get to know a little bit more about you and your journey. So you're a gay women's transformation and empowerment coach. Tell us, how did you get into that? Yeah, of course. So I, for me, I've been in like HR and people roles for kind of 12, 13 years. And I've helped people um, within the space of employment. And I want to make a difference in terms of people's life more generally. I myself am a gay woman. I'm happily married to my wife of very nearly 10 years. Um, and I, <laughs> thank you. I just want other people to feel that freedom and that happiness that I now feel. And I know the journey that I've gone through to get to this space and want to help other women to do that. So yeah, super excited. Nice. And so you talked about the journey to, to get to this place. Um, what kind of a journey has it been? I mean, maybe take us back a little bit and, you know, when it maybe wasn't so good, because of course you've tr obviously gone through your own transformation and empowerment journey. So let's start from a little bit back when, you know, before you went through that kind of journey. Yeah, of course. So I, it's ups and downs, as I, I think everybody uh, in this community would, would say. So I, um, when I was younger, I ultimately fell in love with my best friend at the time. Um, and it was super confusing and, and super like it was a really challenging time. And then throughout my younger years, there was some rejection. There was lots of kind of negativity around who I was. And I felt uncomfortable and just unsafe in my own skin I really wasn't sure who who I was and who I was wanting to be and whether that was okay and I was hearing from those around me and externally and just pressure that it wasn't okay and it wasn't as easy as like being a straight woman yeah. so I fast forward a number of years and like kind of I was on this journey and just pushed through and now I look back and I think god the the strength within me is like I do I do look back with compassion for for myself um and and then yeah when I was how old was I I think I was about 23 22 23 uh I met Laura who's now my wife and she literally changed my life um she 
I remember saying to her on our first date, what do you do if people don't agree with who you are and that you're a gay woman, a lesbian, whichever term uh, you want to use? And she said, well, if anyone doesn't agree with it, then they don't get to be in my life. Like, I don't give them the time of day. And I was just in awe of this response and this strength that she had, um, but also knew that I'd met my person. I'd met the one that I wanted to be with and who I say she changed my life. I'm now seeing that I've changed my life through the work that I've done. Um, so yeah, that's, and I just want more people to, to get through that journey to get, it doesn't matter what age you are, where you are, if you've had rejection or it's a fear of rejection, but it impacts, I know it impacts deeply. So yeah, the other side is much better. Yeah, I can, I can, I can sense that. And, and I love how you reframe that from your partner changing your life to knowing that you actually did that work as well. So, you know, we have people who come into our life and they, 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 they kind of put a mirror up to us, but we end up being the yeah. ones that make the transformation ourselves. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So when you were talking about, you know, there were certain people in your life, we had some negativity. So was that family? Was that friends? What, like, how, how was that journey like for you with, with, with the people in your life? Yeah. So it wasn't all, it wasn't everyone. Um, but there was like certain family members. And I think when you're younger, that you're very impressionable as well. So it was people close and relationships have changed and work has been done now and things are so much better. But when you're young, I don't think until you're older, you realize how your younger years impact you. Um, but yeah, it was people close. And also I lived in a small town and I just felt like it, it wasn't like, there wasn't anyone else who I could identify with apart from like the odd person. Um, it felt very lonely. So yeah, it wasn't London, like London's amazing. Um, so yeah, it's it's very different. It wasn't that where I grew up. So there was there was environment as well. I can totally understand and relate to to that and to the, especially to that lonely feeling because when you grow up in an area where you can't see anyone else who's like you. You don't feel like you have someone that you can reach out to and speak to. And this is also, you know, 10, 20, 30 odd years ago where you don't have the same resources available to you like we do today, like social media where you can find other people who are like you or other coaches that you can speak to and get support. It, you know, if you were to go to seek out, you know, actual help, you would go to the local counselor or psychologist who probably doesn't have any experience dealing with other people who are just like you. So again, you still feel so isolated and alone and that loneliness just like breeds into probably a lot of your personality and how you act as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think that support is so, and you're kind of like trying to work out who you are, but you're not sure where to turn to work that out. It's, it's, yeah, it's tough. And I think I, I don't want it to come across like, uh, for me, I now look back super grateful of everything that's happened to me because of yeah. the learning. And it's got me here now. Like I wouldn't be um, an empowerment and transformation coach for gay women if I hadn't had that path. So yeah, it's, it's, it's shaped me and shaped my life. Totally. I mean, if you had a normal, easy upbringing, then you probably wouldn't be um, inclined to, to come into this and probably couldn't relate to so many other people out there. So because you've been through those struggles, you've overcome them and you've turned it into, you know, your mission. That's what people are going to see. And, and, you know, that's what the fantastic thing about, you know, that journey is, is you're relatable to so many other people out there, right? Yeah, it's just, it's someone to talk to. Like, even if people... I've had a few people like reach out in the DMs and just asking questions like, how do I cope with this? Or what if this? And it's just someone. And as you said, it's, it can feel like, and if you've ever felt like, like there isn't anyone, it's really challenging. So it's just knowing that there, there are people there for you. Totally. 
And so you mentioned that on your first day with your with, with your now wife, that one, you knew it was she was going to be the one, but two, like you appreciated her her approach to to things. I think there was something around um, you know, if if they if they don't accept me, then they don't have that in my life. I'd, I'd be curious to know, like, ha, like her journey of getting to that point as well. Like, has she always felt that way, or like, had she been on a like a journey a bit longer than you, where she'd kind of dealt with 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 certain things as well? Yeah, I think her journey has been. Um, it's had its challenges, but different challenges. And I think from my perspective of answering that on her behalf it would have been always that would have just been how she she is in terms of and how she was in terms of like this is who I am and if you don't like it then go away um which was so different to my um experience and how I felt about myself and my self-worth and self-love um so yeah no she's she's had a, a different journey but this is who I am and that has just been like confident we used to Christiana we used to go into London because she lived in London when we first started dating and um I used to feel like just lucky walking around with her like she was so confident and just it was just the dreamy stage it was lovely and now I have got that inner confidence in myself which has been a journey to get there but an incredible one to do and that's beautiful and powerful. And that's, that's the power of, like I said, also like having a support system, someone who can relate to, because again, probably back then, you know, you wouldn't have had like a coach or a therapist maybe that, that you could support with. And so a lot of people in the queer community find that within their relationships, especially like their intimate relationships, you know? And so what would you say to someone out there who's probably like in a space where you probably were before you met your partner struggling to find someone like what what can they do to kind of take the next step in their journey of empowerment and transformation yeah so I think before you it's it, there's kind of two parts to it which is know that and trust yourself with who you want to find and trust like I say trust your heart like your heart will find the person it's meant to find and also do like look inside I think so often we have uh, outside influences that can be family friends environment society whatever it is there's always someone isn't there telling us how we should live our life on every level uh in every way um so it's kind of quiet in that noise and look inwards what makes you happy what do you want and I think when you're looking at your partner wife whatever it is look at like what does that look like a little bit down the line because if you can't see the now you can't kind of see through the perhaps the fear the fear of rejection the fear of further rejection look at okay in two three five years what do I want this to look like and then you can start to kind of think about okay where might I find that person and I think just trust yourself. It is so innate to trust ourselves. And it's it's hard. It's like freaking hard to trust yourself. But in terms of like, follow your heart, that would be my advice. Mm. And what, what about those people who feel like, like you said, it is so hard for them to trust themselves because maybe, you know, they've, they've had to protect themselves for so long, right? They've been trying to protect themselves because they haven't felt safe. And, you know, that trust to, to, to kind of open yourself up a little bit more, like how, how does one open their heart a little bit more? So I think I would say as well, don't like try and get to the end, like just do, just do little things. Just, I think understanding how you can feel safe is super important. If you don't feel safe in a lot of areas of your life there may be one or two that you do there may be a trusted person it might be a friend a distant relative it may be seeking out communities with the trusted individuals and communities with people that you can identify with and there's a number of 
charities for LGBTQ plus individuals. There's a number of um, like communities and spaces as well. And I think just work out what safety means to you. And you can do that by thinking, okay, what's making me feel unsafe here? Mm -hmm. um, and also be kind to yourself. If you're in a place where you can't push, you can't push through that, know that it will come. Like if it feels like it's a now thing and if you say to yourself now or never, that's pressure. Whereas if you say to yourself, okay, I can't do it now, but I know what I want and I will get there, then it feels it feels kinder to yourself. Being kind to ourselves is very important, right? Especially on this journey um, where probably a lot of our younger years were spent being not so kind to ourselves and hating on ourselves, especially for being different, for being, you know, queer, for being a lesbian, a gay woman, et cetera, right? And so being able to learn to be kind is difficult, but it's probably one of the most important things that you can ever do for yourself, right? Absolutely. Like we are so unkind to ourselves, <laughs> like so unkind. I think everyone is, and there's so much more awareness of like mental health and um, kind of how you talk to yourself and things now, but particularly, as you said, when you sit in this kind of community of difference and whatever that might look like for someone, you feel like, you're the different one and that's what my when I spoke about my experience of where I grew up I felt like I was the only person who was different which looking back now is 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 like I smile and have a little laugh because that's ridiculous I would never have been the only lesbian gay woman gay person in that town but it felt like that and it's how I felt that what's important so yeah, whatever self-love looks like, macro level, micro level, small things, big things, try and get more of that into your life. And also kind of just find that, yeah, that self-compassion that it will, it will get better. Um, and not everyone, if you are going through a hard time and you're facing that rejection, not everyone will be you like that. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with you. So, of course, you probably get a, a you know a range of different women that come to you. But if you were to put it down to say two or three things, what would you say those three things were? Were that, I guess, are the major issues that gay women or lesbian would face today, and why probably seeking out some support is going to be important to them? Yeah, of course. So, I think the first is around that rejection so that fear and it, it can be they faced rejection and yeah without knowing it that's deep rooted within them they fear that in a multitude of on a multitude of levels um and it's it's driving it's driving their decisions it's driving kind of the the way they're living their life um, so they're either, they've had the rejection and they're like, everyone's going to treat me like that and reject me, or they have got a fear of it, um, because of their difference as, as we spoke about. Um, and it's really just about understanding where that's coming from. And, and that's hard. Like, you know, you're, yourself, Cristiano, like a number of our clients, they've been trying this work for a while they've been they've been doing some of the the work on themselves but it's taking someone external as a coach to help them see it from a different angle um so that's yeah I, I think that's the the first one and the second one has just left my head which is not uncommon with my head um so let me just have a moment um okay yeah and I think that I, while you're having a moment I'll just uh, I'll answer that because Every single person on this planet has dealt with rejection at some point. Like no matter who you are, if you've dealt with the human experience and the, the experience of emotions, you've experienced rejection. And some of us will say, no, 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 rejection. I've got no problem with it. 
But in reality, it is, as you said, so deeply ingrained into so many of us, especially us in the queer community, that it stops us from moving forward, whether that is moving forward in reaching out and finding support systems, finding new friendships, asking someone out on a day, going for a new promotion at work. Because almost every time you walk into a new room, you start to scan around and go, are these people going to accept me or are they going to reject me? It's ingrained in you because you've grown up as someone who is different to the norm. You you have a different system, like emotional system. And we, we've, it, for, for us in the queer community, rejection is well, probably one of the number one things that we would deal with throughout our lives. So, yeah, I, I agree with you for, 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 for lesbian women, for, for gay women, that rejection and that fear of it is going to be holding on to, you know, a big, a big problem for them. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just in the driving seat, isn't it? I think when I did my coaching qualification and realized like from the age of seven, the majority of your beliefs are formed. Like that's mind blowing. That is absolutely mind blowing that from like the age of seven, you don't even know they're there as well. So yeah, I think it's uh, that that's something that raising the awareness of that and helping people see how that impacts on them is 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 something that that's really key um, um i yeah i think the the other thing in terms of uh my clients is so as a woman the and, and you you get this no matter what gender uh, you identify with but i think particularly as a woman the pressure in terms of the life trajectory so the question around getting married having children becoming a mother and I think that is an added layer of pressure for women around as a gay woman, as a lesbian. What does that mean in this whole, do I become a mum? Do I want children? And again, so much pressure external to all of our, all of this. Um, and questions that people shouldn't be asking and labels that people are putting on people that they shouldn't be. And there's, yeah, that's the the added layer that I would say for gay women. And, and the empowerment is about empowering yourself to make the decision for you. Do what you want in your life. There's only one of you. So that's that's the other message that I that I share with with my clients, with my audience and, and want women to make choices for them, not because they feel like they should be doing something. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big one there because again, you know, we all know that throughout life, people expect you to finish school, go to university, get in a relationship, get a really good job, you know, get married, have kids, and you know, blah 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 blah. We all know that's kind of like what they the the, the heteronormative like viewpoint of life is, and for for women, again, you know. The, the, the topic of having kids would be a, an important one, whether you are, you know, a lesbian woman or a straight woman, but I can imagine for, 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 for gay women out there, that it would be a, a very big topic because you would have a lot of people asking you about that as a question, like, oh, when they, when you find out about being a lesbian, oh, what about having children? That would probably be one of the first questions that family and friends will, will say to you uh, from, from my, um, just from my perspective, that's what I would say. And the opposite would be for, for, for gay men, people would say, oh, so you, oh, so you don't really want to have kids. They would, they would say it more like that to us. So I could see how that would be such a different experience because the women obviously have, you know, have the, the system to, to have children and they expect that women should have children. And then they would almost expect that gay men aren't going to have those things as well. And are going to be, you know, traveling and living a fancy fancy life for the rest of their life which is just not the normal for for every gay, gay man and gay couple out there as same as gay women and, and, and gay relationship out there as well yeah absolutely and I think like when did these assumptions become okay like it really it, it deeply angers me like I know people on so many different communities who do want children don't want children trying to have children and it just be, like other people need to not interfere in everyone's business like it really does become like as you're saying like oh that means there's a gay couple a gay male couple oh you you don't want children then it's like, well no that's not necessarily what it means like stop assuming would be my advice yeah 
and everyone th- everyone thinks that it, that it's it's not possible or it's going to be harder for you, and, and and it might be harder for you, but it also may just work out magically the way it's meant to, which is life, right? Yeah. Mm. And so was there like a third one that we had for for people that would come to you that you would say is like a, a, an important thing that a lot of gay women face uh, as well? Yeah, so and I, I don't, again, I don't think it's just gay women, but poten- potentially um, kind of more intense for gay women. And obviously that's the the audience that I'm speaking to and the, the course, clients yeah. that I'm helping is around that aspect of self-identity. So we've spoken around like rejection, we've spoken about pressures in terms of conforming with the life trajectory, but in terms of how you identify. And I think more and more people are realizing the impact that perhaps their work and their career is having on them. And I know myself when I was asked only, it was either last year, perhaps the year before, kind of, okay, imagine you couldn't work. What? what how would you feel I actually couldn't answer the question I was like I would feel like I'd lost myself and that was a really critical turning point for me to realize okay I am more than my job I am more than my career I am more than my business it's I'm more than my relationship even as a person absolutely like who are you as a person and helping women feel whole within themselves is again a journey I've been on and once you get there it's an incredible feeling but it's it is a journey to get there and I think I do think more and more with work and career and business and just again the pressures of everything you like people are identifying in different ways and it's who they are as a whole and then they take that whole self to those different places. And I would even go a little bit further to say that that's a lifelong journey. Like you can get there, but then as you evolve as a person, you become more of yourself and you unshed layers of different things that have happened uh, and you learn new things about yourself. So that's the, the fantastic thing about going on the journey, because once you start, you never want to stop it. Right. Yeah. And, and as you're saying, like you start to, give less of a damn I'm trying to not swear on your podcast Christiana but you're, you start swear to away give, give swear away <laughs> okay okay so you do you start to give less of a shit as you get older and as things happen because you realize what's important and things are happening in your life that are helping you realize that and it's I think yeah just you you look at I love looking at like older people and the wisdom that they have and they just say things how they, they're like, that's what I'm going to say. And they just don't think about it. Um, and yeah, if we could all just be a bit more self-honest and say what we mean without hurting other people, but it's, it's about finding your own voice. So that's so important. Being authentic, really, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I think when we've... My first program I run was called Becoming Authentically You because when oh, we on Instagram, yeah. Yeah, because when, when we have gone through these challenges in life, everyone else has put opinions on you. Everyone else has put um you've had to put so many masks on, like you've been so many different people and, and sometimes for protection and sometimes for acceptance. It's helping women take those masks away, take that all away and say, who are you authentically? Who do you want to be as well? Who are you when no one's watching you, basically, right? Absolutely, yeah. Love that, love that. Yeah, beautiful. Now, from your perspective, um, it's interesting because we're going to have a, 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 a wider range of people listening to this. I want to hear from you because you're a gay woman and I'm a gay man. I'd love to understand what do you think are some of the major differences in the journey um, of a gay woman versus a gay man? And maybe um, when I say journey, it's like how society sees us and views us. Um, as well as like experiences that we have, you know, 
accepting ourselves as well? Yeah, so good question. Um, I think, I, th- I mean, there are differences. There's going to be differences. Totally. And, but th- th- I mean, there's also, I, I, th- I don't think it's so, like generalizing in that, like men have this, women have this. Everyone has a different journey, don't they? Like some, I would say that like, the perception that gay men have more of a challenge with male relatives and things like that, potentially, in terms of like coming out to fathers, like that would be one of the challenges. Whereas females potentially don't have that, but then also have the pressure of what does this mean for like being a mother and the the future and things but I don't think it is men and women I think it's anyone can have that different experience and it's not just based on what's in their life it's kind of what sorry it's not just based on their gender it's what's in their life like who's around them what their beliefs are how strong they are telling them their beliefs as well um we spoke earlier about Laura my wife and her in terms of her family accepting it that's just one example where she has been accepted and other examples where millions of people won't have been so I do think that it comes down to an individual level and their level of experience totally and I'm and for sure I mean no matter who you are um and where you are in the world, your journey is going to be completely different to the next person. And there can be so many factors at play that can, you know, add into your experience. And that could be, again, where you live, it could be your family, like your, you know, your political and social systems of acceptability for, for queer people um, as well, right? Gay, gay men or gay women, right? Um, And it can be, you know, a, a myriad of other things. Like I said, like, you know, the things that, you experience internally how relate to not only your genetics, but they also relate to how you were brought up as well. And so again, as you said, between zero and seven, a lot of your beliefs are formed. You could have someone who's on this side of town and that side of a town who form very different belief systems because of the family they grew up in, the environment they grew up in. Um, but also you could have someone across the world who is in a completely different place where to say society doesn't accept their them then you're going to have like i said another set of things that that add to it i guess uh in in um if we generalize things in 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 sense do you feel that society sees gay women better than they do gay men or like what how would you view that because there were obviously going to be some people out there who would say one or the other right what's your perspective because again you're a you're a gay woman i'd love to hear from you what, what you feel about that Yeah, I think I do, my personal opinion is that the perception is different. I do think, um, because it's more, again, the reason why I would say that that it might be a little different, first of all, is because women are sexualized in general by men. And so them seeing a woman with another woman, it's a fantasy for them, for the straight, straight men out there, which is why I, I believe it's a little bit different. Whereas for gay men, men seeing gay men and then sexualizing that is a disgust to them. And I'm not saying this in general, but I think that's what would, would you would say would overarching over the years would be the reason why there might be such a different perception. Now, now maybe add on to, on to on top of that. <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I would agree. And I think it's also like how things are portrayed. If you look at like TV programs and films, like it's always the perception of the gay man is so different to the perception of the the gay woman. There's still challenges. Every blooming gay or lesbian couple, someone dies. Like if you actually look at that, it's ridiculous how quickly they get them out of the storyline. But the, that perception in terms of, as you're saying, like what's more in inverted commas natural and what's more accepted by society. I still think there's a a lot to do. And I mean, Christiana, we're only talking about, lesbian gay women and gay men there's there's a whole realm isn't there in the community of oh. other individuals who have got a, a lot longer fight i would say than than the communities that we sit within 
which is why, you know, us sticking together and, you know, understanding and accepting each other's differences can help us to then support those people who do need that. Because again, we are a rainbow community, meaning it's not just gay women and gay men. Like I said, it's also related to, to gender and all the other different spectrums that we're on from sexuality and gender as well, right? Because it's not just a binary world that we live in, right? Absolutely. And I think, I do think it's worth celebrating how far, there's, there's always more that can be done. There is always more that can be done. But I think from seeing, and, and don't ask me who, because I'm rubbish with names, but seeing like celebrities and different people being out about how they're identifying and how they're living their life, it, it is starting to, to help. I can't identify with someone who is like non-binary, so I, I can't talk to the challenges of that, but I you're seeing things more. Awareness is definitely increasing. And I think that there's always more we can do, but we're we're on the first tiny step of a long path, but there there, there are some changes being made. Of course. And it's why it's important that there are people out there like you, Katie, who are focusing on the areas that you can relate to the most that you have great experience with and also that you know other people are going to look at you and go hey like there is a light at the end of that tunnel as well yeah I just I I never want anyone to feel alone like no matter how they identify like I I actually get really sad when I think of people on their own um I don't know about you but if you go to like a pub or a restaurant you see someone on their own now someone said to me the other day they might have chosen to be on their own which is different and I need to kind of have that awareness but also for someone who as we spoke about at the beginning feels like there's no one to turn to feels like it's it's a very dark place and it can feel really challenging I want them to hear that there are people out there who are there for them there are they're going to find their people it may take longer it may be quicker but it's not always going to feel that way and yeah I just never want anyone to to feel alone and feel feel lost as well. I agree. Yeah. Um, loneliness is an isolating feeling. It's a very lonely feeling, of course. Um, and I think as as we know when we talk about the numbers, over 70% of queer people suffer from loneliness at some point in their life, right? Which is more than double the rest of the the, the population. So of course for queer people, you know, it, it makes sense, of course, because as you go through your journey of accepting who you are, there's a lot of internal dialogue, a lot of internal battles that you go through. And that experience is very lonely because you're afraid to share those things with other people because you don't know who to turn to. And you also don't even understand it fully yourself, which is like I said, why those numbers are so high, which then obviously can lead to other mental health problems, which is why, again, every single number of the mental health um, numbers, the depression, anxiety, suicide rates, addictions, they're all two to three times higher than the general population because of things such as that. So as you said, wanting to, to, to like fit, and I, and I and I hear you on this one. Feeling, seeing other people who are feeling lonely, and 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 the struggle, and that's something that you know touches you, of course. What what is I guess maybe one thing that you can leave them with here today that could help someone who's probably in that position as well? Because again, as as we talked about the numbers, there's definitely going to be listeners out there who are are feeling lonely as well. Um. So I think the. I'm trying to think of something that's easy and it's it's really hard because it's not easy I've got two things which is find one person find one person so um I have a twin sister an identical twin sister and uh my older sister as well I'm uh, one of three sisters and my sisters and particularly my twin sister were just there for me like no matter what um, and my older sister actually messaged me the other day after watching a live I did on my Instagram platform and she was like I'm crying oh my goodness I can't believe you like went through this felt like this and said like I hope none of it was me and I was like oh my goodness no like none of it so find the one person and it doesn't have to be your family it like it can be 
someone at work at work there's so many other communities and networks now as well and i, I online, know it's scary. Right? you could find a friend on, online as well yeah online absolutely like it doesn't have to be someone close so find find one person and the other thing is you will always have yourself and i know that that's hard when you don't like who you are you may not feel like you know what your skin is let alone like who you are in that skin but you will always have you and I think that comes back to as we said that lifelong journey of feeling whole and feeling complete but just remembering no matter what you've always got yourself so and that's why I was like oh do I say that because it's not easy that is not an easy thing but just finding the little moments like oh there's enough air to be breathing today finding those little things that you you can be grateful for even in the toughest of times and remembering that yeah you've always got yourself yeah and I I mean I love I love hearing that as well and I think you know for people out there who are who are thinking about like how can I get to know myself better easiest way to do that is start journaling some things that are going through your head because oftentimes we find we're like when we get ourselves into these moments of feeling lonely, it's often the same kinds of thoughts that we're having and they just kind of build up and they get to this point. So if you start to write down how you're actually feeling every time you do it, you might realize, oh my God, I, like it's this one thing that I'm feeling here. If I can notice what that is, then I realize that there's something I can address, which is the the, the foundation of then looking to find support and, and, and finding someone like Katie um, out there who, like I said, specializes in helping women. If you're, if you're a gay woman, you know, reaching out and getting support, even if you feel like if you can't find anyone in your life, then reach out to a professional to get support. And like I said, start journaling those things because then you'll realize, I know that this is the thing that I really need to help, you know, overcome in my life and, and get empowered and, and start to have that transformation. Right. Absolutely. And I, and I think often, and I've been there and thousands and millions of people have like, when you don't want to dive into the thought, you're like, I'm not going to write it down because it becomes real, but it actually gets bigger. We know that we fight our thoughts, they get bigger. We fight our fears, they get bigger. So you'll, you'll write, Michelle, like just, just journal, just empty your head. And even if you write it and don't look back at it until a little bit, another couple of days or something, and then start to think, okay, what, what am I seeing here? What ask yourself like the five whys why 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 helps you really get to that root cause but uh yeah and those five whys come in handy from the corporate world <laughs> we all i think we all know <laughs> i know i can't believe i just said that i'm disgusted <laughs> myself i'm like oh no <laughs> preaching corporate stuff but <laughs> no but it is true like it is a it is a real good tool i i just laugh because Anyone who says the five whys is, has learned that from, from the corporate world. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, Katie. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on here. Um, where can people find you? And have you got anything, um, you know, coming up that you can share with the the the, the ladies that are listening out there? Yeah, of course. And, and thank you, Cristiano, for, uh, for letting me come on and talk to, to your audience. It's been it's been amazing. So I am super close to launching my brand new website. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's been a journey as well. Uh, but we're nearly there. So um, you can find me on Instagram at Katie, which is K-A-T-Y rather than I-E. It's often spelled I-E, but mine's spelled Y. So K-A-T-Y dot Smith dot coaching. So that's my Instagram handle. And I'm also just about to launch a brand new free masterclass for finding and loving yourself. So everything that we've spoken about today, um, and it's got a lot of self-reflection elements in there, like you were talking about, Cristiano. So yeah, happy to share the link for your listeners to get access to that as well. That'd be amazing. Yeah, beautiful. And I'll share that that link in the, the comments below so that if you're interested in, in, in that, then you know exactly where to click to find uh, the masterclass. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening. It's been a fantastic episode. If you've got any comments or questions or shares about, you know, how you're feeling with what we talked about, feel free to share them below or feel free to reach out to me on social media and you can find me on social media under Cristiano Green on all platforms. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your time. Always remember that you've got this and we've got you. We'll catch you next week. Bye for now. 
Are you ready to embark on a transformative journey towards love and happiness? Introducing the 21 Day Gaiman's Guide to Love and Happiness. This isn't just a course, it's a pathway to discovering your true self, overcoming challenges and embracing happiness. Join hundreds of gay men who found joy and freedom. Learn from Cristiano Green, a coach with 20 years experience and a journey like yours. For a limited time, get this life-changing course at 75% off with a 100% risk-free guarantee. There's nothing to lose, but so much to gain. Your new life is just a click away. Enroll in the 21-day Gay Man's Guide to Love and Happiness today. Visit theglobalpridecollective.com and start your journey towards a happier, more fulfilled you.